June 10th, 2019 is 28 years, 11 months and 16 days since I masturbated and had an affair. Relationships are going to start sounding like this. They're going to start sounding sweet. We're going to like it. Going to like it a lot. So I took these three tools from the last videos. I prayed to the God who I didn't understand and didn't know if he'd really there, didn't know if he'd help me, didn't know if it was a he or she or what or what. But just pray, just as act of humility. I, I knew what I wanted, act. I inventoried what I wanted, and I put myself in a place, an ACA meeting, where I knew that what, I knew they had what I wanted. And sure enough, Jay showed up, and we met, and we met at the meeting a couple times, and I asked her out, and we went out, and she was seven of the eight things I wanted. She did not have big breasts, and we always laughed about that because she didn't have big breasts, and she said, "God gave you seven out of eight. And so we laughed about that seven, but she had the other seven things I was looking for. And I was in my first healthy sexual relationship. Now it started. <laughs> Joanne and I got to our third date and I had no idea. Nobody, back in the eighties, nobody knew what healthy sexuality looked like. There was no rules, there was no guidelines, nothing. And so the best I could use was a Chris Christopherson movie uh, and Burt Reynolds movie, uh, and, and, and they said, well, the third time I went out with my, this girl, my wife, this is what she did. I thought, okay, well, three dates, that's it. So for the first two dates, I, I didn't make a move on Jay. And she was like, what's wrong with this guy? You know, come on, what's up? By the third date, you know, she, she said, look, I'm ready to rip my clothes off, you know, before, before, don't you, before we even get in the car. And I said, Jay, this is what I need. For me to be healthy, I need you to commit to me. And here's what I need. I need you to say, uh, I will not have sex with anyone else. And not only will I not have sex with anybody else, I will not intrigue. That means talk about, say, well, if this doesn't work out with Steve, maybe me and you can work out so that you're cheating with your heart. You're cheating hard, that kind of thing. And said, and I'll do the same with you. I won't touch anybody, kiss anybody, have sex with anybody. And I won't let anybody, anybody who comes on to me, is attracted to me, I'll say, look, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in a relationship. So my heart, as well as my body, is into it. That's what commitment means to me. And, and if you'll do that, that's what I need. And, and if that's, then you'll be my girlfriend and I'll be your boyfriend. She said, can you do that? And she said, yes. And with that, we just jumped into the, the most wonderful sex you've ever, I've ever had in my life. Because there was, she could talk about her feelings and we would talk about our feelings while we were having sex, you know? It was unbelievable, it was like scary, freaky. That, Cause that's not what I had done with the 300 women before. And so there was emotional stuff, my heart was in it. My, my, my body was in, I was in the relationship. And it wasn't like, you know, when you have, you have an addictive relationship, it's like as soon as you orgasm, well, God, I gotta get rid of this one. You know, high, cause you're feeling shame and self-hatred and self-loathing, but it wasn't like that. Afterward, I, we lay in each other's arms and we talked about how that felt and, and what our lives were like and what we wanted and what we didn't want and we laughed. She had a wicked sense of humor. She was like, a black sense of humor. And I, we love to laugh. And I, it was the first time I ever played music. And she, she liked uh, Anita Baker. It was very popular at the time. And, and we'd listen to Anita Baker, which was this very sexy black singer, rhythm and blues singer. We'd have sex for hours. And it was wonderful, wonderful. It was just, and I'd never experienced it because I didn't know that feelings plus physicality was what healthy sex was about. And, and what we believe in SLA is, is that intimacy without commitment it's just disease. You can't have intimacy without commitment. That means you gotta say, not only do you have to not use porn, and not, uh, uh, but you have to not cheat on somebody and say, I'll be just with you, a monogamous relationship. Because if you're not doing that, you're not being intimate according to the, the, the most pervasive sex addiction recovery world, sex and love addicts anonymous. And I believe that. And so it changed. It, you know what it was like? It was like the difference between eating a box eating the cereal or eating the box that the cereal comes in. All those years before, from 16 to 35, I was just chewing on the outside of the wrapper. And that may keep you from starving to death, but it won't keep you very content. But then after that, it was like, ah, oh, this is what it was supposed to be like. And it moved from black and white to color. It moved from two dimensional to three dimensional. And it moved to four dimensional and things that, Things wake up inside you when you're committed to another human being and you're sharing feelings that you just can't have when it's just, you know, bumping uglies. It's just, it's just, it's so, it was so shallow. I felt I cried at what I had done to myself for 16 years with the shallowness and the emptiness. It was just like living in a ditch, a dry ditch where there was no water instead of living in a paradise. Uh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And it lasted for 
two and a half years. And it was the first healthy relationship I would ever had. It was lovely, just lovely. And then it ended, and it ended because I had another disease that had not been discovered in 1991. It wouldn't be discovered for a number for another 10 years called post-orgasmic illness syndrome. And some of you guys on the site have that, and there's a video on the site on NoFap um, success about poise. Post-orgasmic post illness syndrome, poise. It was discovered in 2001. Uh, and what it is, is when you're orgasmic, uh, you feel like some of you who've got problems with drugs or alcohol, remember what it feels like the day after the hangover? Well, that's what it began to feel like having sex. And it wasn't because I wasn't committed or it wasn't because I didn't love her or it wasn't because we didn't have feelings, limits, boundaries, needs. It's because I had a different disease and I finally had to tell my partner, I've got to stop having sex because I feel so bad. And at the time, Jay just, she just, she took it personally, like it was about her. Like I didn't like her, I didn't love her, I didn't want her, and it wasn't about that. It was about, I had something that I didn't understand and no one understood, wouldn't would understand for 10 years. And even 10 years later, even 20 years later, there'd only be 400 of us in the world who would be diagnosed with this disease. Ironically, of all things, I was the man to discover the cure. And we'll talk about that in a future, uh, future video.